Welcome back. It's nearly Halloween, which means it's time for chocolate, lollipops, crisps. And if that wasn't enough, how about a loaf of bread with raisins and a ring in it? Perfect. <laughs> uh, it's time for a bit of barn bracken. and Patrick Ryan from Firehouse Bakery in Delgan. He joins us this morning, no better man, Good to morning. talk us through the brack. This is a tradition, the Halloween tradition, Patrick. It is. Um, yeah, so Halloween originates in Ireland. It comes from the festival sauna. Um, so this... Barn Brack traditionally came with like a fortune telling game. So you'd have like different things could be found inside, like as you say, a ring, a stick, uh -huh. a cloth. Um, so yeah, it's kind of where the original kind of festival talk came from, and that's why we thought it'd be next week, appropriate, easy to make. So um, basically, what we're doing is we're making a very simple, enriched yeasted loaf. Uh, we're working, you're going to be using a little bit of fresh yeast. I've got a dough on here already, which is just 500 grams of strong flour, um, 5 grams of salt, 50 grams of sugar. 300 mils of milk and an egg. And we've added to that some orange zest and some ground cinnamon. Okay. Just to add some spice and some flavor. So you can do this by hand. If you have a mixer with a dough hook, feel free to use it. The dough hook does exactly what your hands should be doing. So I just have this already started because it's gonna be mixing for about eight to 10 minutes. Yeah. You'll always find in rich doughs take a little bit longer to come together than say a traditional basic bread recipe. Okay. Um, if you're using a mixer, just be patient, let it go on slow, gentle speed, because we don't want to generate too much heat within our dough. Um, but you'll find as your dough comes together, we finish it then by dropping in about 50 grams of butter. And this right. just helps it really enrich it. Soft butter, just yeah. room, uh, room temperature. Room temperature uh, if you're doing it by hand then, what is the risk of, uh, of a heating up then with your, off your hands? So with your hands, not so much is going to be a problem. Uh, basically, we have a thing called the friction temperature. It's oh, right, okay. the mixer. In, in the machine. But with your hands, like the mixer, generates more, more constant, you'll get tired first, the mixer won't. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're guaranteed, um, yeah, 10 minutes of it. We're using some fresh yeast, yeah. um, it just looks a bit like Play-Doh. Um, oh. If you don't have fresh yeast, dry yeast works perfectly fine. The, big, the main big difference is dry yeast more concentrated, so use less of it. In the re recipe, we're using 10 grams of fresh, use five grams of dried. Gotcha. So we're gonna fill this loaf then with some dried fruits, um, currants, raisins, sultanas, cranberries, but we soak them in some Earl Grey tea and some whiskey. Uh, right. So ideally you do this overnight, just make them really juicy, really plump, um, as opposed have to just drain them now, in. Now, yeah. You've drained them, have you? No, so basically I made 300 grams of dried fruits and I've added 100 grams of tea, so it'll soak it all up. And, and even, so, if oh, there, so if there, even if there is a little bit left, that's fine. That's okay, it's not gonna, it's not it's gonna, gonna seep into the dough. The dough, will, the dough will absorb it. Okay. So you'll find as you add the fruit, then your dough's gonna go a bit like squidgy, messy, because yeah. it just takes a little bit for it to work in. And the reason we kind of add the fruit at the very end, because if we put this in at the very beginning, the mixer would just break it up, pulverize it, kind of turn it into a puree, but we want to keep the fruit intact. You want to keep a shape to the fruit. So once our dough is fully developed, we just add our fruit in and mix it just enough to blend it. That's it. Can you do this with the kids if you're, you know, on the Halloween break and kind of getting ready for oh, the... Oh, absolutely. Get their hands in. There's no real wrong way of kneading. Yeah. But they have to get in. And great, it's a great thing about baking with kids. Once they're involved in it, they're definitely going to eat it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, It's a great thing to do. So I'm just going to leave that mixing nice and slowly. Great thing about this, though, is you can do all the hard work the day before. Simply knead it, mix it, put it into a bowl, throw it in the fridge. Leave it there all night. Leave it there. So oh, so you're going to let it rise now, are you? Yeah, because a lot of people get put off by bread making or baking because the perceived amount of time, oh, four or five hours, they're not making something like that. Literally, I threw this together, 10 minutes mixing, shoot in the fridge, and that is simply it. Oh, give us a look at that. Oh, right, OK. So, that, so and this, is, this is after, how, how long has that been sitting there? So that's been overnight in the okay. fridge. So even at cold temperatures, your dough will prove, but just nice and slowly. Yeah. So can I ask you a question? You can. When do I put the coin in and the ring and all I that? Was just, I was going to ask that. So, if you wanted to actually like do this at home, um, well, you do. Well, if you're doing it with the kids, you're going to do all the bits yeah, and bobs, yeah. aren't you? Absolutely. So, yeah. when we get to this stage, so basically, what we need to do is we're going to just knock our dough back. Right. So it's not at the, at the point you, with the mixer then, or when you're kneading it, it's 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 at this point, yeah. So we can just put it back. Right. So right. basically, as the yeast gets to work, it pr it breaks down the sugars in your dough. It produces carbon dioxide, and that's what causes your dough to rise. Uh huh. So by knocking it back, so we just need to divide it. So. Depending on what you're going to bake it in, I'm just using these little small little cake rounds, little pie dishes. I'm going to divide into three. If we're using the bigger one, just increase the weight. Lovely. We're about, 500, about 420 grams is kind of what I'm looking for based on the quantity of dough that I have. So now if you wanted to, if you were shaping out at this point and you wanted to pop it in, you could just spread it out, pop your little, um, you could pop the ring pop in. The ring in. Yeah, or whatever you wanted to put into it. As I say, if you, if you want to put an iPad into it, very, very well, it, it, well, A modern interpretation <laughs> of it would be maybe an iPhone or a, exactly, a USB yeah, yeah, cable. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Something people will use. Do you know what the different things are? 
What? I looked at the different uh, the different items you can get here. Okay. Your brick. A ring is means what? Oh God. You're Mar getting married. Yeah. You're oh, get okay. married. Thank God. I was like, yeah. what have I missed there? If you get a stick, uh, it means that you're going to have an unhappy marriage. Oh. If you get a, um, a, a coin, it means you're going to be rich. A piece of cloth means you're going to have bad luck or you're going to be poor. Uh, and there was another one. Oh, there was a pea. There was a pea. It means you're not going to get married. So a pea, you, like, a, a, like a vegetable pea. So you don't you, put any other kind of pea in your barn bracket. If you gift that to people, though, are you like, here's a stick, you're not going to get married? No, no, no. It, it, comes, it comes up randomly. It, it, like, oh, you have your slice. And you isn't buy. that the way it works? Yeah, and, who, and whoever slices it and gets it. So basically, you once your dough is divided, we just want to mold them into little rounds. So obviously, this could go into a loaf tin. It doesn't have to go into a round. It's a pen. Whatever you have works perfectly fine. So just roll it straight round. Again, when you're shaping bread, Try not use too much flour because it actually hinders you. So do it a little bit on your hands if you need it. We roll why, why does it hinder you? Because basically what we do, as we roll the dough, we want the dough to grip the table. It, it pulls in underneath and makes it tighter. It's what gives us the structure. Okay. If you lose loads of flour, it just slides around. It's very difficult to work with. It's a small little bit. It's a, very, it's a lovely light colour. I, I would have associated a brack with being quite a, a little bit darker. And so Christmas we've added, yeah, so like the, the fruits will tend to colour it. Then as the fruits work in, um, the little bit of cinnamon will darken it slightly. Um, but then once it comes together and once it's been shaped, it'll take about probably two hours, uh, two to two and a half hours um, at room temperature to prove, which will give us something. And you leave it again, OK, it right. It will grow again. And mm -hmm. you've got a glaze then to do. Yeah, so basically, once it's ready at this point, when your dough's ready, you should have a little bounce. Yeah. There should be no fear of touching it and it collapsing. If it mm -hmm. kind of feels like it's going to drop, you've overproved it. So then we're going to bake this. Most bread recipes, we bake at a slightly higher temperature, like 230, 240, but with this, because of the sugar content, about 200 degrees is perfect. Okay. I'm going to bake it for 25 minutes. Yeah. 25 to 30 minutes. So while your loaf is baking, we want to make a little whiskey glaze. Oh, lovely. So we just got a little drop of water, and then we're just going to add some whiskey and some sugar. Uh, any type of, any specific type of sugar? Just cast just, sugar is fine, because uh, I don't really want to darken my, it's just a little kind of a sugar glaze, but just with that kick of whiskey. So we let that heat up, and then Oh, look at that. After about 25 minutes, because you'll find once it hits the heat, it'll jump. That looks lovely. And this will give us our little... Oh, so you're not putting the glaze on before, it's, it's when it's all done and dusted. Yeah, yeah so this is what... I'll, okay. We're basically going to let it soak in then as it cools. It gives us a beautiful shine to it. And you get that like, kind of sweet coatness to it. And just add a kick of whiskey then And as well. when you put the glaze on, do you have to let it sit for a while or can it be eaten straight away? Well, the only thing about this now, it'll just be... You can try, like, oh, it'll just be very, very hot. It might feel a little bit doughy because uh -huh. it's so hot. Uh, obviously, straight from the oven is absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You will let it need to let it cool a little. But just then, you can give it a couple of little brushes, let it soak in, come back, brush it again. It'll just give this beautiful shine and add a little sweet coatness to the outside of it. Perfect. So then when it's done and it's cool enough to slice, we're going to be taste. left uh, lads. with this little guy. And you can see kind of all the fruit spread throughout it. Yeah, it's evenly spread. So the ratio of brack to butter then is one to one, is it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Minimum. <laughs> as much butter as brack. Oh my word! Would you look at that? that you butter nice. me a bit there now. Well, I okay, right? If, if you, you don't, want, you don't mind as long as you that's like butter. Stuff. That's that's. Yeah, of course. Get a quick taste in. Generally, generally, what I go nuts on the old. Uh, I go nuts on the butter too. I'd be a bit of a butter fiend now. There you go. Oh yeah, and toast it Grab up. That. I don't want to paw. I don't want to paw it with my fingers. But even, even like after a couple of days, if it's got a little mm. bit, of, it makes the most amazing kind of French toast. Oh, it, well, uh, this is what the discussion we were having earlier on is toasted is almost better, some people were saying. So slice it up and toast it. It's absolutely gorgeous a couple of days later. That's beautiful. As always, you can find the full recipe on our website, or you can catch Patrick at Firehouse Bakery in Delgany or Wicklow Town to try the brack yourself.